How do you know you're in France, Marius? Uh. When you go through a drive-through boulangerie. Bakery. Yeah. 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 This is where we get the baguette and the flan and all those nice things. And this is the best bakery in France, according to Nadia. I don't know about if it's the best bakery in France, but it's the absolute best bakery I've ever eaten at in France. Yeah. Like the best baguettes, the best bread, the best flan. Like the flan is unmatched to anywhere I've ever eaten. Merci. Merci. No. Merci, au revoir. Drive through bakery. And like not only convenient, also really, really good quality. Really good quality. Spoiling good quality. I can't eat my bread anywhere else anymore. Yeah, just uh, had to go to the IKEA just to buy one little little cupboard, you know. Yeah, we needed. We don't need just a cupboard. We needed. A we need it. We need it. We need it. We needed a Venus flytrap, first of all. Really needed Always that one. one of those. More storage boxes. We really needed that we one. We did because your clothes are everywhere. Yeah, my clothes are and everywhere. I'm tomorrow, and I want to make sure that everything's organized. Yeah, a big mirror. We really need a big mirror. Well, the worst is yet to come. I gotta put it all together. You're gonna put it all together. Yeah. Make sure you film it when it all falls apart. Then. Ha 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 ha, Nadia. <laughs> Very funny. Come on. Come on. It's my favorite bit. It's getting to Maybe we should get a job here. So, new week. Nadia was here last week. Uh, she finished the contract on her previous boat and she came home and then uh, another temporary job came up for two and a half weeks, just uh, temporary chefing on another yacht that is uh, captained by uh, an acquaintance of her. Um, that was was just a good deal and uh, she decided to take it on so after uh, two and a half weeks she will be back here and hopefully for longer but uh, having Nadia here for just a week means that I can't really do a whole lot on the house because we've got to do so many errands and uh, research and materials that we want to use later on and a bit of designing uh, well and also just enjoying being together here in our house on our property in France so we've uh, we've got a new favorite restaurant and that sort of things uh, yeah bought uh, six new chickens and uh, went shopping yeah so yeah it's now uh, back to work again I uh, gotta finish this uh, bloody lintel encapsulate it all with uh, with cement with mortar and then once that's done uh, and cured tomorrow, I can start opening up that wall. Yeah, let's carry on.
there is a uh, cement available that does not shrink, non-shrink cement, but I could not find that here in France. So what I will do is some, I've left a little opening between the lintel and the mortar and I will uh, fill it up with, uh, this is a uh, two, com two, com two component vinyl ester uh, stuff and it's made, it's a chemical anchor and it's made to uh, anchor uh, bolts and screws in, uh, in, in walls, in, in rock or in uh, stone. It works really well. You just uh, squirt it in, it mixes the two components in, in the nozzle and, uh, and then it just goes off within 15 minutes or so and it does not shrink. And I've used it before. Uh, it's not made to, for, for this purpose, but it'll work, you know. I, I know that if I squeeze this in the cavities that the that there's no shrinkage, that the lintel is sitting on the wall and that's just not going to move, not even one single millimeter. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, there's still cavities in the center of the wall of, and the lintel. I can't push the cement all the way in, but I can reach the center with the nozzle of this uh, vinyl ester product. And that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I should put a battery on it. Oh. Okay. With a battery, these tools work a lot better. And that's it. That was uh, 15 euros of vinyl ester. Yeah, it's not cheap, but then uh, I just want to have this uh, lintel sitting correctly. This will take 10 minutes to completely set and cure. And then I'm gonna fill up the rest with uh, just normal mortar. Yeah, so we, we don't exactly know how old this house is. Um, we think that this was built in the late 1700s. And now I'm taking apart the work from some workers done in the 1700s. That's been here for 300 years. Feels kind of strange, you know, to d demolish that kind of antiquity. But there's no other choice, really. I mean, uh, in order for these houses to exist, continue existing, you need to be able to utilize them and utilize them in a way that that is part of our time. And things we think are important is light inside a house. We have double glazing these days. In the old days, they didn't have double glazing, so they 
build as much wall and as little window as possible for insulation but times have changed and we have better ways to insulate now so we want to have light in i guess you know this is a little sacrifice you need to make in order to maintain the existence of an old building like this at least that's how i try to justify it Now, if you remember how I built that uh, IPN beam lintel, I have shoved in this lower horizontal part of the eye, just slid it in and glued it and clamped it, wedged it to the inner vertical eye from the eye beam. And then I have later driven some screws from the ceiling beams into the lower part of the lintel but it's not screwed from underneath into the vertical parts of the lintel so that is something i can do now that i have this all opened up so now this horizontal part of the i-beam is screwed into the center vertical part of the eye plus into this fascia beam basically it's basically an eye beam with two horizontal parts to it it's super super strong <laughs> So uh, the cross section of the lintel, IPN, homemade IPN, looks like this. That's a ceiling beam. It's, it's the ceiling beam running, uh, yeah, a beam of, uh, of the house uh, running from left to right, running from street side to garden side. Then. 
and I try to do it as much as I can into scale. Yeah, roughly to scale. So this is the ceiling beam. Then the IPN that I made. is basically this piece. And then to cover the exterior side up, I've positioned another beam here. So the roof is going to rest here. And at both ends, this will lean onto the wall. And then in, in the middle, there will be the door. Now this space here, this space is basically hollow. So what I'm going to do, and I've treated, the wood, the wood is treated, that's why it's so yellow. That's in, in, in France, uh, the sign for treated wood. I know in New Zealand it's pink, Australia I'm not sure, America I don't know. But uh, the wood has been treated, but I have treated it again with uh, an inhibitor for mold and pesticides and I, I don't know what kind of stuff. I've done it all, all the all the wood here, and I have treated the top side with uh, also a uh, uh, resistant uh, coating against uh, rot and uh, and uh, moisture, etc. And part of the bottom side, that's the dark brown stuff. In here, this is still hollow, and I want to have that filled, and I'm just going to squirt. I'm just drilling holes through here every every foot or so and then I'm gonna squirt in expandable foam so that just this is just it's just closed up it makes me feel better that there's something in there uh, no one no, no nothing can go and live in there sort of uh, it doesn't add to any strength but uh, yeah so um, what you've seen me screwing in under here, these are basically screws going in here and screws going in here. Oh, and screws going in here. This is on all sides. This is glued and screwed from all sides. The, I am I'm very convinced that this is a very, very strong lintel. I'm, uh, yeah, this is a very, very strong solution. Yeah, and, and the reason why I've built it this way, you could have seen in, in, in previous episodes, is just because I want to I wanna keep maximum um, height headroom in, in, in the passage underneath. If we had a, a lintel that was traditionally built, would be sitting under here, it would really reduce uh, the space, the walking through space, basically, the headroom. Just some openings to stick the nozzle of a foam gun through. And for foam, always use this stuff. Not those, those spray bottles that you can't really control and you have to use everything in one go. Just invest in a nice pistol, 20 euros, 20 US dollar, the cheapest one. And uh, these cartridges, and you can, uh, with cleaner, you need to get the, the, the cleaner and you can uh, use a cartridge that's like this for months. What I do after I use it, I take the cartridge off and then I flush the pistol, the gun with this cleaner and, uh, and, and also sometimes the nozzle of the spray can I, I clean with this cleaner so that uh, it doesn't block the exit of the foam. And uh, yeah, you can use as much as you like, as little as you like, and uh, there's no wastage.
don't know when it's full. I'm sure it will find a way out somewhere, but I'm just going to spray uh, a whole can in there. And then I'm pretty sure it will be very full, that cavity. Yeah, so uh, that's basically what we have achieved for today. It's probably uh, one third of what I uh, really need to do. But yeah, progress goes slow because I have to hand carry everything downstairs and then process the stones, the rocks and the mortar into reusable product. I was hoping to uh, do the whole opening in, uh, in two days, but yeah, well, we do what we can. Huh? I don't, uh, I'm doing it by myself and I have to hand carry everything. There's just no other way, really. Yeah, I want to continue opening up this all the way to the lintel of the passageway between the main house living room, what's going to be the living room, and the bathroom, because that lintel sits quite low as well. I have to bend my head there. I can still gain some height. So if we could uh, redo that lintel downstairs as well, then uh, catch two birds with one stone. Anyway, that's it for today. Tomorrow is a new day. So, uh, the week is coming uh, to a close, to an end, and I'm going to show you what I've done and also discuss what uh, I'm going to do uh, next week. Next week is going to be cool. Next week we're going to build up. This week was breaking down, mostly. So, as you can see, I have removed all the stones and mortar from uh, the area where the door is going to sit. And, in fact, I have to uh, take out some more on the right-hand side. Yeah, as you see, those lines up there on the uh, the lintel that's basically uh, the width of the door but i'm going to remove some more because you always gotta allow uh, room for expansion and contraption i'm going to remove a little bit more on the right hand side make it a little bit wider there's still some stones that are sticking out but uh, yeah obviously uh, most of the stones most of the wall is gone uh, to the depth of the lintel, which sits above the door, going from living room to bathroom. And I'm going to remove that today, and I'll show you where. Now, what you can see also in this picture is um, there the beam, the, 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 the floor beam of the first floor. And this is the floor beam of the roof of the bathroom. So... Everything that came out has been, uh, well, is being being saved for later use. There's bricks. I have a whole pile of rock that I'm uh, going to reuse at the later stage. And then uh, I have tumbled all the mortar that came out of the wall and sifted it. Now, and these are buckets with the bigger bits that I'm going to reuse in order to uh, sort of make concrete. And then there's, uh, well, half a cubic meter of just a sand-lime mixture that I will uh, reuse to make, well, mortar. Mix this with uh, cement or lime. And then we have uh, mortar. So, uh, nothing goes to waste. Let's have a look on the, uh, the inside now. So, we've uh, broken down the wall to the lintel. This is uh, the door going from bathroom to yeah, what's going to be living room. And uh, as this lintel sits low at least for a person of my dimensions 
I want to raise it and I can raise it because I've got steel beams that are much smaller, less in depth um, than this lintel. I don't know how this is fabricated exactly, but uh, I'm going to remove all of this today and then we can install a smaller low low profile steel lintel underneath those beams these uh, roof beams well roof flat roof flat roof beams so to speak yeah and then it's gonna be next week it's gonna be taken down the ceiling here recondition all those beams because I have had a look at them and they seem to be in good condition but they need to be cleaned up and uh, wire brushed that's my plan and then given a good treatment and then I can install them back in position after that we're going to build up the lentil uh, the lower part of the wall and uh, yeah possibly even uh, the roof here the plan is to remove the stairs yeah and then uh, next week it's going to be uh, basically building up instead of breaking down i don't really enjoy the breaking down part um i prefer to build up someone asked me last week uh, what is really the most favorite job you have in in, in the whole construction redevelopment and that's just basically jobs like this you gotta calculate you gotta really think you gotta really plan and uh, it's just uh, sort of risky in a way uh, and i can't draw much on uh, previous experience or routines i've done a lot of electricity a lot of carpentry in the past but uh, this is basically all new uh, and especially to this scale um, yeah so this is really something i enjoy and when you see me talking in the picture you often see me with a frown on my face or a bit of a yeah a grump very serious but that's because i'm thinking and uh, but i'm actually really really enjoying this it's 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 really cool yeah yeah this is uh, <laughs> this is all gonna be different in a couple of weeks time it's really cool basically rebuilding part of the wall structural members uh, yeah it's 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 an interesting job So I've secured these beams all in place. They can't move left, right, forward, sideways. They will stay in position when I uh, take down this lintel. And um, the reason why I want to keep them in position is because I want to have them sitting exactly like they're sitting now later on. Looking at the inside, this is going to be the living room or the kitchen, we haven't decided yet. But I have supported these beams as well. With uh, two additional Etais supports. Forgot the English name again, struts. And uh, yeah, secured them with these angles, corners so that they cannot uh, move in any direction. These beams are all going to be replaced. Yeah, they are not, most of them are not in a, in the condition I would like them to be. So they're going to be replaced, but I have secured them because I want my new lintel to sit exactly so that the new beams will sit in the same position. So yeah, now the next step is to uh, remove this old door frame and then we start uh, removing what's up there. Yeah, and then after we have removed that, 
we're going to start building up again and that's uh, well my favorite part of this operation for sure Thank you for watching, for liking, for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. You know, uh, 99 out of 100 times, I will always reply to your comments. If you would like to support the channel, you could always buy us a coffee. See the link below or the, the link in the description. And then uh, I'll see you next week. Bye now.